The best pros in the world spend hundreds of hours each year on the practice team, grooving their swings and developing theories and ideas. In this edition of the PGA Tour Home Video Library, 14 different touring pros share some tips and drills that can help with your basic swing and stretch your imagination on the golf course. To start, we'll look at fundamentals which are to be used on almost every shot. 1987 Beatrice Western Open winner D.A. Wybring discusses a possible cure to accuracy problems. Are you having a problem both missing the ball to the right and to the left? Very frustrating. A lot of the amateurs that I've played with in pro-ams the last few years have that same problem. They have good golf swings, they have good setups and postures, which is very important, but they lose the ball to the right and to the left and they can't understand why. Basically, if you lose it one way, there's, a, there's a, a good reason. But if you're losing it both ways, maybe I have the answer. Many times, I, I hear amateurs say, I want to make a good turn. I want to make a good weight shift. But by doing that, they try to turn their shoulders so much, their weight goes way to their left side, out of their left foot, and they lose their balance. And then when they come back through, they wind up having to fall back to the golf ball, losing their leg drive. The other thing that, that happens is when they they make a pretty good turn away from the ball, but their right knee and the weight of their right foot gets on the outside like so. Well, from here, there's only one thing you can do. If you speed your hands up, the club face will close, the ball will go left. If you swing through it pretty smoothly, you're, you have to slide through with your upper body and the ball will go right. If you can work on a drill where you get a, a board or a couple golf balls as I have here, plant your, your foot, your outside of your foot on the balls, keeping the knee and the inside of the foot towards the inside, then there's no way that weight can get on the outside. It'll help you to, to use your legs to support your, your leg drive throughout the swing. For example, many baseball instructors now are working with their, their players on putting all their weight back on their right foot, keeping the knee locked in, and, and pulling the left toe up in the air. They're simulating a golf swing in the leg drive. What they're doing, as the ball is pitched, they raise up their left knee, which the knee comes in or towards the middle, and then they, they stride and they drive through, keeping the weight on the inside. As you can see, if the weight would ever get to the outside, they wouldn't have much power, would they? But the arms would swing out to the outside. Same thing in golf. If the weight gets on the outside, the arms have to come over and cross, or you move through to catch up, and the ball goes to the right. Let me try it my way. Keep the weight on the inside of the right foot. Keep the toe square to your target line. Not open. If it gets open, you can get out there too. Keep it good and square. Allow a good weight shift by the arm swinging the club back, keeping the weight steady, and driving through. The right toe should come up in the air. Weight should get to the left side. Watch DA in slow motion. With the proper use of weight transfer, Weibring has improved his game every year since 1983. Every golfer looks for ways to improve his length off the tee. Imagine averaging 285.7 yards with a driver. 1987 driving champion Davis Love shares his secrets on being a big hitter. I'm one of the longest drivers on the PGA Tour, but my distance doesn't come from my physical strength. It comes from two things. One, a big shoulder turn that creates a large arc, and two, a controlled swing center that doesn't move around and let me lose any of my distance. This big arc comes from a shoulder turn that goes 90 degrees to my line of play. And if I can make that, that shoulder turn, it gets my hands very high, which creates a big arc, and makes the club head go very fast. But also, I have to keep my swing center very still throughout the whole swing to keep from losing any of this club head speed that I'm creating. Let me show you what that'll look like. Now here's another tip to help you get that 90 degree shoulder turn. Take your left shoulder and swing it under your chin to make sure that your shoulders turn 90 degrees to your line of play, and that'll get you a nice full turn with a big arc. And also remember to keep the swing center very still throughout the whole swing so you don't lose any of that club head speed you've been building up. If you move forward or if you move backwards, it'll, it'll lose, you'll lose a lot of that club head speed. Let's try it one more time.
These few things help me with my distance. I hope they'll help you gain a little more distance too. Using the big shoulder turn and conservation of energy, Love drove himself to a one-stroke victory at the 1987 MCI Heritage Classic. So, you say, Davis Love is six foot three inches tall. He should hit it long. Well, Corey Pavin, at only five feet nine inches, matches drives with the bigger pros every week. He's won at least one tournament in each of his first four seasons on the tour. Here are his tips on long drives for little guys. I'm not one of the biggest guys on tour, but I can still hit my driver pretty far. Last year, I averaged about 260 yards off the tee, which was about in the upper third on the tour. I'm going to tell you two things that have helped me to hit the ball a lot further. The first is I get a very big shoulder turn and generate a lot of power that way. And the second is I have a big swing arc. Let me show you first the big shoulder turn and how I do it. When I take a swing, I try to get my left shoulder underneath my chin. This will make me have a big shoulder turn. Let me show you what I mean by hitting one. Let's take a look at that again in slow motion. As I take my back swing, you'll notice my left shoulder coming up underneath my chin, and I can actually feel my chin hitting my left shoulder at the top of my swing. That way I, I know I've made a big shoulder turn, and I can go ahead and hit a long drive. In addition to a big shoulder turn, I also have a big swing arc. Let me show you how I do this. When I start my swing, I keep my right elbow tucked in and extend my left arm as much as possible. By doing this, I create a very large swing arc at the beginning of my swing. It just carries over onto my back swing. Let me show you how this works. These two ideas have helped me hit the ball consistently longer. I think they can help you too. Corey's length off the tee is one reason why he's placed in the top 20 on the money list in each of his first four seasons on the tour. The dreaded fairway bunker. Jim Furry, winner on both the regular and senior tours, shows how to negotiate these worrisome hazards as if they were just routine shots. What I'd like to talk to you about today is playing from a fairway bunker to the green or from the fairway bunker to a long layup shot. Most people have problems with hitting the ball fat and consequently they don't reach the target they're going for. I think I have a tip for you that will help you get the added distance you need from the fairway bunker. I like to practice this shot with a regular range ball that has a red stripe or a black stripe, any kind of a stripe around it because that is what I aim at. I try to make sure that the bottom edge of my iron club hits directly against that red line. That's right at the equator of the ball. Now you're gonna say, well, I'm going to skull the ball. Actually, that's what you're trying to do, but the natural descent of the club will keep you from sculling it even though you strike the ball right against the red line, which is the equator of the ball. That will drive the ball up the face of the club, up over the lip of the trap, and onto the green, we hope. The red line really gets your attention, and you must remember you're trying to strike that line with the leading edge of your club. Okay? I'll try to hit one for you to see if it works. Just like in the regular trap shot, I'm going to put my feet into the sand very firmly so that I don't slide during this swing. I'll choke up a little bit for, for control. Now I'm really concentrating on putting the edge of the club right against that ball, all right? Here we go. Perfect. Just like a seven iron off the turf. Jim's ability to consistently handle these and other hazards has made him one of the top players on the senior tour and a threat to win any week. In a few short years, 1987 PGA Player of the Year, Paul Azinger, has gone from a struggling young rookie to the second leading money winner on the tour. His short game is renowned, and here he gives his tip on the low wedge shot. 
One aspect of my game I'm probably most noted for is being able to hit it low, especially my wedges. Here's basically how I do it. I just keep the ball back in my stance, a little weight on my left side at address, and I take the club back low and finish low without breaking up. Let me show you how I do that. Let me explain to you more in detail what I'm talking about. To hit a low wedge, the ball has got to be to the right of the center of your stance, more towards your right foot. You've got to have some weight on your left side. I like between 60 and 70 percent of my weight on my left side to hit this low wedge. And the most critical part, I think, is that uh, you, you have the club going through the hitting area low. You've got to take it back low, and you've got to bring it through the hitting area low. Uh, most people, when they get the ball back in their stance, they'll tend to come down too steep, and that's going to cause the ball to go up a little higher than you'd ordinarily hit a wedge. Uh, so let me show you what it looks like. There are several reasons why you want to be able to hit the ball low. Uh, for me personally, I have a lot more control when I'm hitting the ball low. Uh, if it's windy out, you can keep the ball under the wind, and that's a, a great advantage. If there's not a bunker in your way, I don't see any need to, to hit the, a wedge way up in the air. So let me go through the checkpoints again. You want to make sure that the ball is beyond the center of your stance, uh, more towards your right foot. you got to have some weight on your left side at address. Another thing I didn't mention, you don't want to hold the club too tight. A lot of people hold the club way too tight, uh, pros and amateurs alike. Um, and you've got to be low through the hitting area. It's more of a 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock type swing. And you want the club low through the hitting area. That's the most pivotal thing. Paul's short game has helped him achieve three victories and a second place British Open finish in 1987, establishing him as one of the game's bright young rising stars. Billy Casper, on the other hand, has seen it all. He has amassed 51 tour and seven senior tour titles. His success stems in no small part from an ability to get out of difficult situations. Back in trouble again. For many years, I was known as Woody because I spent most of my time in the trees learning how to play all of these different shots. We have a very interesting shot here today, about 70 yards to the flag. Normally, it would be a very easy shot to play underneath the trees if the grass was very very low but it's quite high so it'd be a very difficult shot to play to run so what we'll do is we'll use a wedge and hit a shot right up over the tree and bring it down on the green as if it were a butterfly with sore feet this shot seems to be a very difficult shot but with the proper fundamentals it becomes a very easy shot i position the ball forward in my stance about off my left heel the weight is back on the right side simply because I need the weight on the right side to help me lift the ball in the air. I've selected a sand iron here, which has 55, 56 degrees loft. I even open it more. I fan it open, and when I swing the club back, I try to keep it square going back, and when I come through, I try to sweep right underneath the ball, lifting the ball up in the air. This is how you play the shot, up in the air and soft on the green. Oh, yes. We'll take that one. Woody struck again. His Houdini-like ability on the course has helped Casper win two U.S. Opens, one Masters, and two PGA Player of the Year honors. Billy played on every Ryder Cup team from 1961 to 1975. 1977 U.S. Open and 1985 PGA champion Hubert Green has also shown a deft touch when in trouble around the greens. His 19 tour victories are the mark of a man who can get out of trouble when he has to. This little trouble shot that I try to teach in all my clinics, I call it the parachute shot. The reason we call it that is because when the shot is executed properly, the ball comes down like it was on a parachute, softly, will not roll very much. This kind of shot, should be attempted uh, only when your back's up against the wall. There's no, no other shot to hit. You can't play a pitch and run. You're so near the pin or near the green that you can't put any spin on the ball. And it's the kind of shot to hit over a bunker or over a water hazard. And uh, there's no other shot to play. You've got to take a chance here. If it doesn't work, you've lost the hole anyway. So let's take a chance and try this shot out. The most important thing is to 
open the sand wedge up a little bit. I use a sand wedge because you want the highest lofty club in your bag. Sand wedge, you lay the club down with a wide open face and then grip it. A lot of folks try to take the club and open it this way with their hands only. Lay the club down on the ground first, then grip it with a, therefore the club is wide open. This gives you a lot of loft on the shot. Take the club back slowly and the ball is go, will go very high and come down very soft. You also want to have a little bit of an open stance if you can. An open stance will help you get the club maybe a little more on the outside for the ball to come through. Again, open the face up, then grip it. A little bit of an open stance, club back slowly. I can't get a break, but you can. It's that type of stroke saving ability that has been a major factor in Hubert's career earnings of over $2 million. Every player has to deal with the problems of the greenside bunker. These problems come in all shapes and sizes, and South African Nick Price tells of some. One of the many problems that I see with my amateur partners is that they have a lot of trouble hitting the ball different distances out the sand. To be a competent sand player, you have to be able to do this, and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips which will help you. As you can see, what I've done here is I've placed two markers on the green, a white one, which is about 30 feet away from me, and a blue one, which is about 60 feet away. The white one is at a distance that I would say is the more common length you'd have out the sand. To play this shot, what I try and do is if my target line is there, I'll stand at 45 degrees to my target line, put the ball off the left foot, open the club face, and take the club outside the line there. Not square back here, outside the line, and then cut across it. With the longer trap shot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my alignment a little more and take the club back a little more on the inside. Instead of standing at 45 degrees like I was there, I'm gonna come to 35 degrees here. I'm gonna put the ball off the left foot still, take a little loft off the club, and instead of taking it out here, I'm gonna take it out a little more here. Remember, the same basic swing. All I've done is change three things. My alignment, my club face, and my takeaway. Nick has used his sand save ability to become a well-known player throughout the world. When one thinks of great sand shots, who could forget Bob Tway's moment at the 1986 PGA? Tied with Greg Norman on the 72nd hole, Tway hit the shot of a lifetime. This is a little shot I practice quite often. Let me give you a few tips on how I'd play the shot. I've got a slightly uphill lie in a bunker. When I walk in, the first thing I do is open up my stance just slightly. This allows me to be able to take the club slightly outside and cut across the ball. Since I do have an uphill lie in this bunker, I'm gonna play the ball slightly forward off my left toe. If I drew a line, you could see that it's a little bit farther forward than middle. The reason I open up my stance is so the club goes slightly outside and then enables me to cut across the ball, taking not too much sand, just enough sand to throw the ball onto the green. I'm also gonna open up my club face, which allows the ball to get a little bit higher and stop a little bit faster. Let me show you how easy this shot can be. I never thought I was going to be able to do that again. The shot was the cap on the banner year Tway enjoyed in 1986, culminating in PGA Player of the Year honors. The sand shot most feared by amateur players is the fried egg. A buried lie can be intimidating, but Dale Douglas tells how to hit this shot with ease. The shot I'm going to describe today is buried sand trap lie. This is a very difficult shot under any circumstances. It's one that uh, the players on either tour hate to be faced with. If the pin is cut close to the edge of the green, it's particularly difficult because you don't have any green to work with. And normally a buried sand lie comes out very fast with a lot of overspin. 
I'm going to play both shots here. I'm going to play the uh, conventional sand shot where the ball comes fast, and then my secret shot where the ball comes out with no overspin and doesn't roll quite as far. To play the conventional shot, you start with the ball being placed back in, the, in your stance off of your right foot. The weight is on my left foot, and the handle is leaning forward. I'm going to swing the club basically up. It has a little backward motion, but it's basically up. I'm going to bury the club just behind the crater, and I'm not going to attempt to follow through. The ball will pop up in the air, have overspin, and should roll a great distance. Let's see if it works. Now that's not too bad a shot, but it's about 20 feet past the hole, and you don't make many 20-footers for par. We'd rather have them about two feet from the hole. I'm going to play this shot a little differently. I'm not going to position it back in my stance. I'm going to position this shot in the front of my stance off of my left foot. And instead of closing the club face, I'm going to open the club face. And I'm going to make a little different backswing. In fact, I'm not going to make a backswing. The club is going to come, in my mind, it comes straight up. I don't want to have any backswing at all. It comes straight up, it goes straight down, no follow through. Now this shot, this ball should pop up in the air again and not have overspin on it and therefore not roll quite as far. Pins cut close, so I should have a good putt for par. Go ahead. Now that's a lot better than a 20 foot putt. From a buried lie on the 15th hole at the 1986 U.S. Senior Open, Dale hit the shot he feels won in the tournament. Like Tway, Larry Mize hit a shot of legendary proportions. In a playoff at the Masters, he caused lightning to strike Greg Norman again. That was the biggest shot of my life. But it's a shot I have to play every day. And it's a shot you may have to play every day, too. Let me show you how I do it. I start off by playing the ball back in my stance off my right heel. At my dress position, I keep the hands forward of the golf ball, taking a little bit of loft off the sand wedge. As I hit the shot, I continue with my hands ahead so that my hands lead the club head into the ball. The club head never catches up. The hands are always leading. But remember, we're using a sand wedge, so it's going to take a couple of bounces and then have, still have some backspin on it and roll the hole like a putt. Let me show you what I mean again. The ball back in our stance, hands ahead, and the hands leading into the shot. There we get a couple of good bounces, but the backspin keeps the ball from shooting all the way across the green, causes it to check up and ease to the hole like a putt. I hope this shot will do as much for you as it's done for me. After the storybook shot by the Augusta native, Mize went on to have his most successful year as a pro. Once you reach the green, though, your creative shot making may not be over. Two-time U.S. Open champion Hale Irwin always seems to find a way to win. Here he shares a tip about a handy shot, rarely used by amateurs. How many times we've found ourselves, once we've missed the green, off the putting surface and not in the deep grass, but right up against the collar? Let me suggest a way that you might play this next time. Take a sand wedge and hit the ball in the middle with a putting stroke. This imparts a forward roll on the ball rather than trying to get under it. We just want to hit it thin. Let me demonstrate. Take your normal putting stance or chipping stance. Don't break your wrist, but let your arms swing through just like a putt. The reason we do this is that there's just too much grass behind the ball to accurately predict where it's going to land. Therefore, if we can eliminate the carry of the ball and roll it like a putt, it's much easier. Remember, 
And the ball's up against the collar. Take your normal stance, chipping or putting, it doesn't matter which. Keep your hands nice and firm and hit the middle of the ball with the blade, just like a putt. I think you'll find much better results. Improvisation has helped Hale break the $3 million mark in career earnings, putting him in an elite group. Whether you're putting with a sand wedge or your trusty putter, your work on the greens is critical. 1988 TPC champion Mark McCumber shows how to reduce anxiety on the green and save strokes on short putts. In playing with amateurs each week on tour, one thing that I notice that really tends to hurt them sometimes, and even the professionals, is being anxious over a shot. On a full shot, that usually results in picking your head up and missing the shot, probably topping it or hitting it with a big slice. But on putting, too, that anxiousness comes in or that anxiety, which causes a missed putt. For example, on a short putt like this, a four or five footer, even though a person may address the putt, keep their head down, out of my peripheral vision right now, I'm seeing the hole. And what that can cause is an anxiousness. And when that anxiousness comes into play, it makes a person move like this. The head's move, the upper body's move, this change the angle of the blade, resulting in a missed putt. Now, a drill that I've used through the years, it sometimes helps, sometimes it doesn't. But it's something you can try at home at your local club. It's a good practice drill to take away that anxiety. What you do is get over this four or five foot putt. You do everything the same as you normally would. You line it up with both eyes, looking at the hole, then the ball. Then you close your left eye. Now, by closing my left eye, I've taken the hole out of my peripheral vision. And what that's supposed to do is help kind of relax you, take that anxiety or that impending doom as to whether or not the ball is going to go in, take that away. You get over the putt, you look at it normally, close the left eye, and stroke it. This drill has helped me in taking out the anxiety on the four and five foot putts. If you're having trouble with your short putts and looking up too early, try this drill at home. Perhaps the most important putt of Mark's career was a short one to win the prestigious Tournament Players Championship in his hometown of Jacksonville. Known more for his length off the tee, Joey Sindelar has developed a smooth putting stroke which has enabled him to win three tour titles. I've had some recent success with my putting on the PGA Tour this year, and it's due to two things a putter I have confidence in, and my trusty putting board. It's actually a very simple item, something my dad helped me devise. It's a, a board about 15 inches long and two inches high with a couple of nails that I can take in and out to line the board on the green. Let me show you how it works. Place it in the ground. Again, a reasonably straight putt. Figure out where you are. Place the ball down in the sweet spot area of the club foot up on the board to hold it still and stroke through it. If it appears to be correct, just tap the other nail in and you're ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to take the ball and place it on the front third of the board. This ensures that your entire backswing and the forward motion of your follow through will continue along the board and force your muscles into making a straight back and straight through path. In my opinion, this is the best way to consistently make putts inside of six feet. Let me show you how. Let's try it one more time. We're going to place the ball down here again on the front third of the board, making sure that it's spaced exactly where the sweet spot of the putter is. You can see the line on the back of my putter is on the middle of the ball. Stroke the backswing with the putter gliding gently against the board. We're just going to pattern ourselves here. A simple board like this can help you make a repetitive, consistent stroke and help you make putts inside of six feet all the time. This putting ability, coupled with his driving distance, has enabled Joey to become one of the tour's most explosive players. In all, 14 pros with over $20 million in career earnings have given you insights into their games, the routine shots, as well as some creative ones. Watch for further volumes of the PGA Tour home video library, then watch your scores start to fall. For further help on any of the points covered in this tape, See your local PGA professional.
Now remember, keep your eye on the ball. Keep your head still. Keep your left arm straight. And always remember to follow through. For years, these words of golfing wisdom have echoed across courses all over the country. Like in any other sport, amateurs continue their quest to emulate their heroes, hoping one day to perform like professionals. Now the wisdom of these professionals has been captured on home video. PGA Tour Golf, a three-volume series aimed to help the average golfer play the PGA Tour way. Three separate volumes, the full swing, the short game, and course of strategy feature five of the PGA Tour's brightest stars. Lanny Watkins, Hal Sutton, Payne Stewart, Craig Stadler, and Tom Kite will demonstrate and teach the fundamentals and methods that have made them among the best ball strikers in today's game. And there is no better place to observe their talents than the majestic golfing complex of PGA West in La Quinta, California. Its championship courses and beautifully manicured practice facilities provide the perfect setting. This series is a result of the players' hard work during two weeks of production in the California desert. PGA Tour Productions molded sophisticated electronic production techniques with each player's years of experience into three one-hour cassettes. The action begins with a full swing, demonstrating the correct grip all the way to the follow-through. The first and what I consider probably the most important fundamental of golf is the grip. And what I do when I grip a golf club it's much like when I clap my hands together. I want both my palms facing each other. So when I grasp a golf club, I put my palms together, then I know that my golf club is going to be in the right position. As I start to get into longer and longer shots, my main concentration will be on having what they call a one-piece takeaway, where you feel like your whole body turns the club back. There's never any just motion of the arms where the body stays static and doesn't turn at all. Everything kind of turns back together. Once we've got all these fundamentals in place, in other words, we've got our takeaway correct, we've got our connection, and we've loaded the right side, and we get to the top of our swing back here. Once we get there, all I'm thinking about doing is returning to that golf ball at the address position with control of my, with my left side and firing with my right side this way. In the short game, the players will explain the fundamentals needed when faced with golf's touch shots. One of my techniques in, in training age is to take four or five coins and set them down right behind the ball, about six or seven inches behind the ball. And then when I'm practicing, I make sure that the blade gets up over those pennies. And that way, I'm in a position where I can have it up, down, up, and that imparts the, the most true roll that I can get. We're not up here hitting down where we need to come steeply into the ball. On a flatter surface, we want to take it back on our normal plane, but just make sure we keep our left side real firm and through to the target. Again, our pressure points on the grip are with my index finger and my middle finger on my left hand. Our weight's going to be a little bit further forward than it would have been with the sand wedge. And I'm going to be driving a little bit more with the right hand on top of the ball. Not really underneath it to spin it, but on top of the ball to try and get a, a flatter trajectory and get the ball releasing and running to the hole. Volume 3, Course Strategy, will examine all the strategy options available during competition. Okay, here we've got a 525-yard par 5. Now, let's take a look at this. We've got a uh, relatively wide open hole out there. We've got a slightly uphill second shot. The hole's slightly dog leg to the right, but we've got uh, backboards on both sides of the fairway. Looks like to me we can just kind of let it all hang out here. Now, what do we have here? We've got a little shot. What I can see is I've got the pin on the front right of the green. All the trouble seems to be short and right of the hole. So obviously I want to keep the ball left of the hole because the contour of the ground runs from left to right. The information that is contained in the full swing, the short game, and course strategy is a compilation of 61 years on tour. 
For more information on how you can purchase these instructional tapes, just dial 1-800-PLAY-IVE. So you will have an opportunity to learn golf the right way, the sound way, the PGA Tour way.